Welcome to today's MS4 employee training. Today I'll be talking to you about the use, storage, and disposal of significant materials. According to the Code of Federal Regulations, significant materials include both raw materials and finished goods. Some examples include fuels, cleaning products like detergents and solvents, plastic pellets, metallic goods, food production materials, hazardous substances, chemicals, and waste. Hazardous substances are defined in the Comprehensive Environmental Response, Compensation, and Liability Act. Any chemical you're required to report in compliance with the Emergency Planning and Community Right to Know Act is considered a significant material. A material is considered significant based on its physical and chemical characteristics, including solubility, transportability, and toxicity. Chemicals commonly used by municipalities can contaminate our water resources if they make their way to a storm drain or ditch. Runoff containing materials such as paint, solvents, fertilizer, and waste can pollute our soil, groundwater, lakes, and rivers. This could happen from accidental spills, leaks, or improper use and storage of significant materials. Always properly label all containers. Maintain safety data sheets for all chemicals. Sweep chemical storage areas monthly. And use secondary containment for oil and any products with a safety data sheet. Whenever possible, keep chemicals stored off the floor and indoors. Store materials away from high traffic areas. And store batteries on open racks. Return used batteries promptly and contain cracked batteries to prevent spills. And most importantly, you should have regularly scheduled trainings for employees in spill response procedures. Storage areas and containers should be inspected regularly for spills and leaks. When new containers are purchased, check for loose fittings and poorly welded seams. Tank foundations, connections, and piping should also be checked for spills, leaks, and corrosion. Underground storage tanks must be regularly inspected for leakage, and it is helpful to install alarms for underground storage. It's important to properly label all containers. This includes storage containers and secondary mixing spray bottles. A good label will list the material contained and the date placed in the container. Waste containers should specify the type of waste. Pressure washing and citrus-based cleaners can help minimize your use of hazardous materials. When possible, choose products that are non-toxic or less toxic. Proper record keeping is essential in significant material management. Your records should include an up-to-date inventory of significant materials, including delivery date and storage location, a posted map of storage areas and the types of materials stored there, disposal log including product, date, and method of disposal, and shipping manifests of received and disposed materials. Materials should be used on a first-in, first-out basis with outdated products promptly and properly disposed. These are important steps to take to decrease the likelihood of spills and spill damage. Drain fluids as soon as possible from any wrecked vehicles. Keep spill cleanup materials readily available in chemical storage areas. Containers should be closed except when adding or removing chemicals. Use drip boards along tanks and faucets. And use secondary containment around oil and chemical storage. Secondary containment includes a wide variety of systems depending on your needs. If you don't have permanent secondary containment infrastructure, Containment tools should be kept near storage areas and while working off-site. You should always use tarps, containers, and vacuums to collect sanding and grinding waste. Sweep or vacuum metal filing and grinding areas regularly. Use dry cleanup methods. To keep wet sanding waste out of storm drains, allow it to dry before sweeping and disposing of the waste. And whenever possible, you should collect metal and used parts for recycling, Avoid sanding in windy weather and enclose outdoor sanding areas. And minimize the use of degreasers to clean tools. Instead, brush off loose debris and use rags to wipe them down. You should always wash spray guns in a self-contained cleaner. 
You can recycle the cleaning solution, but should never discharge waste from spray guns to the sewer or storm drain. Used paint, exhaust filters, residue, and cleaning solvents may be hazardous. They should be handled, stored, and disposed of as a hazardous waste. Never rinse brushes or containers into a street, storm drain, or water body. Water-based paints can be rinsed to a sanitary sewer. For oil-based paints, filter and reuse thinners and solvents. Dispose of thinners and residue as hazardous wastes. Whenever possible, you should use less toxic paints such as latex or water-based paints with low or no VOCs. There are also some eco-friendly and recycled paints making their way to the market. Minimize waste paint and thinner by calculating surface area. Use the proper sprayer cup size to limit leftover paint and cleaning solvents. Do not use water or pressure washing to clean paint booth overspray or dust unless you will collect and treat it before discharging waste into the sewer system. To dispose of hazardous waste safely and legally, follow these steps. Evaluate your generated waste, particularly the type and amount. Use this evaluation to determine your generator size. Receive a hazardous waste ID number, also called an EPA ID number, from the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. Get a hazardous waste generator license from the county if you're in the metro area or from the MPCA in Greater Minnesota. Self-transport or ship waste to a permitted hazardous waste treatment facility or treat waste at your facility depending on your hazardous waste generator size. Now a brief reminder of some things we've covered today. Properly label significant material containers with the material and date stored. Regularly inspect storage containers and areas for leaks, spills, and malfunctions. Keep accurate records of significant materials including safety data sheets and shipping manifests. Choose less toxic cleaners and paints when possible. Dispose of waste properly and never let it go into a storm drain, ditch, or body of water. Thanks for protecting our water resources.